Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to, wait, why can I not think of how, what to say? <laughs> okay, start over. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 210 of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, December 9th. And I'm coming to you today from Orlando again. This is, I think, the third podcast in a row in Orlando. I am back in the van today, even though we are at my mother-in-law's in the uh, parking lot of her apartment complex. Everyone is home today uh, from work, and her apartment is not, no, there's not anywhere I can, like, get away from everyone else. So there's, like, dishes go, the dishwasher's going, the uh, washing machine is going, people are getting ready. So I just thought, you know what, I better just come into the van and it'll be easier to get it a little bit quieter and to be able to talk and not, you know, make everyone else pause their day for me. Um, it's actually quite comfortable today. It's a little bit chilly outside for Florida. I think it's in like the mid fifties, but it's beautifully sunny and Fortunately, it's not super hot in here just yet because I made a big mistake and I left our fan for the van open. Ken's going to be so upset when he hears this <laughs> on the podcast because it's really not that big of a deal if it's left open. It actually has a wind and a rain sensor, so it will close if it were to rain or something like that. But we actually drove the van to run an errand last night and it didn't close, which means we drove it with it open, which is probably not great for the hinge. It's a thing that goes up like this. Anyway, it's fine. It kept the van nice and cool for me, and I'm definitely appreciative of that. Now, I have a new project to share with you today, but I don't have a ton of knitting and crochet. It's been a really busy week. I'm excited to share more about it with you. Oh, and this is the last podcast of the year. I will be taking a break next week, and then we'll be coming right back into weekly podcasting in the new year. You might be wondering what this is. It is a pimple patch. What's it from? Starface, I think is what it's called. I got them at Target and they work great. I know it's a little bit silly to have them on your face and I totally thought that at first. I was like, why would you wear that out into the world and tell everyone that you have acne? But then I'm like, everyone experiences acne at least at some point in their life. Unfortunately for me, it's been like since I was 12. <laughs> so for like 20 years, but, um, they work really well for me and they also prevent me from like picking or itching at a pimple. So I'm just embracing it and deciding that it's fun that it's a star instead of like a flesh colored circle or something like that. Those are also fine, but I'm just embracing it and I don't care if it looks silly. I would rather keep my face, you know, prevent it from too much scarring and all of that. All right, first project of the day is Kent's socks. These are what I'm calling my World Champs socks because this is the World Champs colorway from the Little Wolf Knits that Kent and Brianna dyed together. It is knitting up really nice, actually. I did not care for it. I mean, I never really liked blue and red together. Um, so it wasn't my favorite when it came out um, in, this, in, the, in like the dye pans. We have a whole video of us dyeing this colorway. I, I wasn't there. I was filming. Um, but I wasn't a huge fan of it. Then when it got into the skein, I was like, you know what, actually, it's not so bad. And now that I'm knitting it up, I'm like, actually, that's pretty nice. So I think Kent's really gonna like these. These are Kent's first pair of hand knitted socks. So I started these, I think last week, and then I wanted to get them ready to go for Disney World because we spent three days at Disney this past week. And I thought I would knit on them a ton, but turns out, we did not wait in line for that long and we did not sit for that long. We were go, go, go the whole time. So I barely did any knitting. Like I just, this gold marker right here is the end of the toe start of the foot. So I can, you know, count my foot rows and match them on each sock. And then this little Mickey wreath marker, isn't that cute? That's from Lock and Lou. We did that for Sockmas a few years ago. That's where I started this week. So barely over an inch of knitting done totally fine. Now I have these to knit on in all situations where simple knitting is needed. But the thing I needed to figure out 
was how many stitches to do for Ken's foot since this is his first pair of hand knitted socks. So I used my perfect fit sock formula, which is something I teach within my perfect fit sock course, which is always for sale. There's a link down below if you're ever interested in it. But essentially it's a course on how to measure different parts of your foot and leg, put together your own custom formula for your own sock. You can do it for yourself or for anyone else. Um, and then make a sock that really fits you best. So if you're somebody who has really narrow feet, but like larger calves, you can't use the same stitch count throughout the entire sock. That's just not gonna work for you. So that's what the formula is, is to help you find what works best for you. With socks all of the time, no matter if you're taking your own measurements or following a pattern or whatever you're doing, there's always gonna be tweaks needed. So I'm doing toe up for a couple of reasons. I want Kent to be able to try this sock on um, as far as like foot comfort and length goes. And then also for leg length, like he doesn't, he hasn't had a pair of hand knit socks before. He may not know exactly how long he wants the socks to be. So with doing it toe up, it's a lot more um, informative, I guess that's the right word, informative when you're trying it on because you can see, you know, how it's fitting. You can get that cuff down, but I think it's just a little bit easier toe up. So I haven't done all of his measurements yet. I just did his ball of foot measurement, which is a really good indicator for the number of stitches that you will need for your foot. And so once I got his ball of foot measurement, you know, did a little math with the gauge and negative ease, I was able to get 66 stitches for him, which is great because that's not too much. When I do my own socks, oh, sorry. <laughs> when I do my own socks, I usually end up somewhere around 54 to 56 stitches for my foot. So it's not that much bigger um, than what I normally do. So that's no problem at all. So I'm chipping away on his socks, uh, I guess. You know what, actually, I'm gonna switch this marker. I had Kent pick out a marker. I did the Mickey wreath because we were at Disney and it's Christmas time, but now I'm gonna switch over to uh, this little hot dog. It's literally a hot dog that is oh my gosh it's a hot dog that's also a dog and it's so cute and i think this one is from simply serving let's see if i can get it to show this is it's so hard to show stitch markers because you really need like three hands there we go you can kind of see it anyway it's a hot dog that's a dog and it's so cute and then i also chose gold light bulb stitch markers because <laughs> I try to always be like sort of themey. It also just depends on my mood and how much effort I'm willing to put into it. But apparently, if you are the World Series champs, your first game of the next season, that was weird, your first game of the next season, you have gold lettering around your jersey. So I'm like, okay, I'll do gold um, for that. So very themed, very fun. I'll keep using my cute little Christmas bag for another week. Now I've done a little bit of work on my Battenberg blanket this week, but I think I only put in one square and I wove in some ends. It's actually more than I thought, but I didn't bring it down to the van today because it's really not worth showing. I didn't do that much. Um, I also have bought some more yarn for my 50 States Hexi blanket, but I haven't added anything in. So I'll update you on those in the first podcast of the new year, but I started another blanket. <laughs> I am so blanket obsessed this year. I love making blankets. I love using my blankets and I have finally started a blanket for one of my 2023 advents. Now I've made this project before, so I feel like when you're willing to make a project a second time, it must be really good, right? <laughs> this is the Crochet Advent Baby Blanket by Lucienne Crochet. Now I made this in July of last year. Actually, I didn't make it in July. I used a July advent calendar. I made it in maybe, April or May, I can't really remember, but it was part of my scrap free 2023 when I was trying to use up a ton of advent calendars that I had. Gonna have the same problem this year, but it's not really a problem. I'm I'm prepared for it now. I have so many patterns, you know, in my pocket and so many more are coming out. So I made this uh, pattern for toaster and I used a 31 day advent calendar. And the original pattern is written for a December advent calendar. So 24 mini skeins, plus a main skein, which is perfect for so many 
advents, like how they come, but I had already adapted it to work for a 31 day advent calendar. So I have that project in my project pages if you wanna see how I did that. But for this one, I've also made some adaptations. So instead of doing the main color, there's a main color that you start with and that goes in between each of the stripes um, and you do a different stitch for that main color. This is a paid pattern, so I'm not gonna tell you all the details, but I will tell you how I modified it. So I just eliminated that main color stripe because I don't wanna do it and I like having, uh, I like having all my colors like back to back to back. And I also haven't opened up the main skein for this advent calendar yet. So I just figured I'll do it in a similar way that I did my previous blanket. I also have, because of that, I wanted to, um, I wanted to make a blanket that would be about the same length as the one I made previously. And for that one, I did 31 colors of four rows each. And so I was trying to do the math to figure out, you know, how could I make that happen with this blanket? I don't wanna, if I do four rows each of 24 colors, I'm gonna get a much shorter blanket. And with that other blanket, I think I had around four to five grams left of each color. So I knew I could probably squeeze out an extra row. Turns out I can, just barely. So I am doing five rows for each color. No, So no main color, and then five rows for each color. The only exception to that is this first row. Because I had the cast on, I was only able to do four rows. Um, it bothers me, I'll be honest, it bothers me a little bit. And I wish I had thought of um, using a different yarn to do the chain prior to when I started it. Obviously I could have gone back, but now I'm into it. And I could, I guess I could always go back and add another row in a different color, but I think it would have been less noticeable had I picked um, a similar color to do the chain and then uh, started the blanket. So I'm not gonna let it bother me um, more than this. I've shared that it bothers me. It's fine, it's really not a big deal. I think in the grand scheme of things, you're not gonna notice that much, especially because a lot of these colors blend into each other anyway. It would be a little bit different if it was maybe alternating two colors over and over again, then you'd really notice like that one would stand out. Let's say if I had like navy blue, white, navy blue, white or something. That would look bad, but I think this is okay. So I'm not too bothered. So that's just a, a tip for you if you're doing this blanket and you're making modifications to do no main color, um, maybe find a similar color, do your chain, and then that way you can get the same amount of rows out of each 20 gram mini skein. The other modification I've made is I've gone up a hook size, my gauge is a little bit bigger, and therefore I've reduced my cast on. So. I can't remember how my overall size compares to the original pattern, but I think I'm somewhat close, but I'm getting more of a rectangular shape. So I have all these notes in my, in my project page from the last time I did this project, and then I'm gonna be updating it as I work throughout this one. So, so far, oh, by the way, I'm using my Homespun House advent calendar. I did not say that, did I? So this is the 2023 A Homespun House Advent Calendar. If you haven't seen uh, my Vlogmas where I organized all my yarns, I wanna show you how I have been organizing these. I did not come up with this idea on my own. Um, somebody, oh wait, this is in. Somebody messaged me. I think they messaged me or left me a comment saying that they saw on Tony Lipsy, who's TL Yarncrafts, um, her Vlogmas, I guess, one year, where she strung her yarns up together and then tied them so she didn't have to keep them in bags to know the color order. And I just love that. And I also love how it lets you see how the colors are playing together. So these ones are actually all labeled individually, which is nice because I was able to write on them what color they are. So for some of my other advents, I've, I've done things a little bit differently. There's an episode, I wanna say it's like day 10 or something where I'm getting everything organized, maybe a little bit later, maybe like 13, but it's on my Vlogmas if you wanna see how I got them all organized, especially the ones without labels. So this is days six through 13. So you can kind of see we're coming from, you know, pinks, more pinks into like purples and blues. And then I didn't wanna have all of them on one string together because I just felt like that'd be a lot to manage. So I started a new strand, different color, just to kind of visually help me for days 14 and on. So here's 14 through 19. 
and that is all I've opened so far. So goes like that. I think it's gonna be so pretty. I am really excited and I'm having a great time. It's a really simple uh, pattern, quite easy to do. Um, once you get it all set up, it's just repeat the same rows over and over and over again. So it's very, very enjoyable. And since I've already made it, it's even easier to do. Now, as far as leftover yarns, um, for the first color that I put in, after the cast on, I had a tail like this long remaining, like that is it. And so I thought, oh no, this is gonna be a problem. I don't know if, you know, for the next stripe, what if I'm a teensy bit looser in a couple stitches and I run out of yarn? That's gonna be a problem. But somehow I am getting more and more yarn out of each one. So this is how much was left at, uh, for color three. This is how much was left for color four. And uh, that's all I've done so far because I'm, I'm putting in color five right now. So I don't know if I'm getting more comfortable, more even, and I guess slightly tighter. It doesn't visually look like I'm, you know, coming in at all. So I think it'll be okay, but just something to watch again, if you're making this. Um, really loving everything so far, loving the color that I'm putting in right now, and I'm enjoying this so much. Um, maybe I'll take my little Mickey wreath and put him on here. Um, that way I have a little Christmassy something on this blanket. Now, I am under no impression that I'm going to finish this before the end of Advent or by the 25th. So I'm on the one, two, three, four, fifth color, and it is the 19th of December. So in order for me to catch up, I would have to do, let's see, I've got like six days left, I guess. I would have to do math. I would have to do like three-ish colors per day, three to four colors per day. I know that math is not completely accurate. I was just trying to do it fast without being completely wrong. And I am not gonna do that. <laughs> I am basically just working on this as I feel like it, as my heart desires, and I am just enjoying it. Would I like to get it done by the end of December? Kind of. I think that would be nice. I have three blankets going right now, and that is an awful lot of blankets. The Hexi blanket that I'm working on is definitely ongoing. It's something that I'm picking up yarn, you know, I'll be picking up yarn for, for a whole other year, all throughout 2024, and that's completely fine. But I'd really like to get <laughs> my Battenberg blanket and maybe this blanket done so that I can kind of shed the extras that come with it, although there might not be any extra yarn. And then I guess I'm gonna rotate out which blankets I bring with me in the van because I can't bring them all. And right now I have my Quadrophenia. I don't know if you remember that one. It's a knitted blanket, also great for advents, that I keep um, in the cubby of the front seat so that when I'm chilly, if we're I'm riding in the car, I can just put it on my lap. So I think I'll have to switch that out with one of my new blankets that I finish because I just can't have that many blankets in the car. <laughs> as much as I would love to, it's just not practical. So I have some, you know, sort of ideas for what I'd like to finish for the last, you know, 11 or so days of the year, but also being gentle enough on myself to go, you know what, is it worth pushing yourself or is it worth just enjoying the holiday season, taking a little break and just working on what feels good. It's the last podcast of the year, but this is also going to be the last question segment because I'm going to be replacing this segment in the new year and doing something more related to travel. I have so many ideas from all of you. I just need to kind of finalize it. It may look a little different week to week, but I really wanna incorporate some of the amazing things that we've been doing and while we're traveling around and maybe try to get Kent in on it. So it'll be like a short segment within the podcast kind of sharing more about the life that we are living right now. Um, so that being said, you can continue to ask your questions. I actually love that when I started this question segment, um, I don't know if it was the very beginning of this year or part of the way into the year, I can't really remember. Um, I, I said, you know, 
in order to ask your question. If you can put hashtag question at the beginning, that will help me, you know, find your questions easier and answer them. And that has bled into other platforms and other videos and not just the podcast. Um, people will say, you know, question and then ask their question on Instagram um, or even in emails to me. And I kind of love that because it really it actually does help me identify them. And it's just cool to see that the, I guess that the questions are so helpful to all of you. I'm also planning to um, do my best to answer questions in the comments. So that's why I'm saying still ask your questions. I'm just not going to be bringing them into the podcast in the same way. And then I've also thought about doing throughout the year um, a handful of videos that are question videos, but themed. So I might answer questions about socks and then answer questions about travel or answer questions about knitting in general, or answer questions about um, getting rid of your stash, you know, just all kinds of things throughout the year. So be looking for those as well. I haven't quite decided if I want to put them, the question boxes on Instagram or on YouTube, or maybe I'll just do both so that it's easy for everyone to ask their questions. So I'm not just abandoning um, doing any of like the helping and answering questions because I do love doing that. I just feel like I need something fresh for the podcast, if that makes sense. Um, that being said, we have some really great questions to close out this segment. Um, and you may be hearing some landscaping going on. I can't tell if it's here in the neighborhood or there's a golf course next door. Um, so yeah, you're going to hear that a little bit. And while that's happening, I'm putting on some gloss. <laughs> okay. Let's do our first question. And for this one, I want everyone to participate because it is really, really fun. So this question is from Kiss the Sun. And it says, question, nitty natty game time. Don't think too hard. This is just for fun. And then it's five would you rather questions um, that we are going to do one at a time. You ready? Okay, here's the first one. Would you rather knit directly from the skein with space to lay it out or hand wind every skein of yarn forever. I would rather hand wind every skein of yarn forever. I bring my projects everywhere with me. There's no way laying out a skein would ever last for me for a project. You'd have to leave the project right there and that just wouldn't work for me. So let me know what you would say down below. Question two, would you rather knit only in the dark, movies and shows, or only knit in a moving vehicle forever? moving vehicle for me because at least I get some daylight so I can work on some different projects. I will say it is difficult for me to crochet in the car. I feel like there's just enough bumping that I can't like always find my hooks. We're going to be traveling um, here, leaving tomorrow actually, and uh, I am going to be sitting in the back seat, um, which is extremely bumpy. So I'm trying to think, you know, will I be able to work on my crochet projects or will I just be knitting or will I be like nauseous and just watching a movie <laughs> the entire time? We shall see. Watch Vlogmas and you'll know. Um, number three, would you rather instantly get a knit with any yarn you want in the world, but never keep the FO or only knit for yourself forever? Okay, that one is very easy for me. I would only knit for myself forever. <laughs> I pretty much do that anyway. I have made a few gifts this year, which is fun. Um, but I can see the enticement of getting to work with any yarn in the world, but it would be hard not to keep anything. That's a tough one. All right. Number four, would you rather knit only one pattern for each type of project, one hat pattern, one sweater pattern, etc., or knit any pattern just once forever? Hmm. I think I'd rather knit any pattern just once forever. You can always find more patterns and it's pretty rare for me to repeat. I know I just showed a repeat blanket, um, but it's pretty rare for me to repeat patterns. I guess I have made a lot of muscle burrow hats, but even still, I would rather just make something different all of the time than have to be stuck with just one type per project. I feel like I'd run out pretty fast. Again, you can answer down below for these questions. Last one, number five. Would you rather let Kent, or I guess insert significant other here, choose your yarn for every project with access to the pattern but no input from you, or only ever knit a pattern with the recommended yarn forever? Ooh, that is interesting. I think I would rather let Kent. Mm. Man, the recommended yarn usually is pretty good though. Ooh, this one's the hardest one for me. I think I'd rather let Kent pick because even if he, you know, doesn't know 
you know, exactly everything about knitting that I know from experience. Eventually he would learn a lot. And uh, Kent doesn't just choose by himself. It, even if he couldn't get input from me, I'm gonna say he's gonna ask the shop owner. So I'm gonna loophole that one <laughs> and go with Kent, pick my yarn forever. Um, that was so much fun. Thank you for um, putting, like, putting so much thought into such a fun question. And I hope you got to play along rather you answer you know share your answers below or just uh just answer them in your head i think that that was super super fun all right let me find my next question here i had i did not bring my computer to the car one because it's it was almost dead after i was planning the podcast but also i don't have the wi-fi down here the wi-fi router is upstairs so i really couldn't use it anyway so i'm using my phone today <laughs> all right this question is from mary carol um, is the greatest yarny adventure going to include some uh, sort of make along? Thank you for all you do. All right, I have that right here, the greatest yarny adventure. And if you haven't ordered yours yet, um, they are only taking orders through Christmas and they're gonna ship in July. So this is the yarn from our greatest yarny adventure. And you can also get it as a sock blank. And I think the stitch markers are my favorite part because it's Lydia, our van, and Toaster. And they're so cute. Um, so we haven't made anything official yet, but Andrea and Sam, who make everything, dye the yarn and make the stitch markers, and myself, we have talked about doing a Zoom night, um, maybe to like cast on or, or things like that. Um, I think that they're sort of, waiting to see how many orders they get in total and see how long it takes to get them out to everybody. Their original shipping was going to be January 10th and I think all of the first orders are going out January 10th, but then it was really popular, which thank you by the way. Um, so they've had to keep adding like new uh, ship times for those every group of orders. So I think we're now up to like the end of January. So maybe we will do something in February so that everyone can get their yarn. So stay tuned, nothing official yet, um, but hang on to your yarn once you get it in January. By then we should have something to share about that. All right, wrong way. Next question from Kaylin Chapman. Hello from North Carolina. I'm a crochet lover, but have been working on my first pair uh, uh, my first pair of socks, pretty much first knitted project ever. It was going well until I realized I was knitting inside out about halfway up the foot. I have frogged and restarted several times and I always end up inside out again. I'm knitting toe up, knitting toe up vanilla sock using long circular needles for the magic loop method. Do you have any idea as to why it would be working up inside out? Thank you so much for your help. Let's take a look at a sock because I have a feeling that your positioning is just inside out and you're actually okay. That you're not gonna make an inside out sock because you can just flip it at the end, um, but that some people just feel more comfortable working with the, um, working like outside in. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm using Magic Loop for these socks right now and the smooth knit side is on the outside. This is how the sock is going to be worn. My pearl side is on the inside. It's like a little pocket. And as I'm knitting, let's see. As I'm knitting, I'm looking at the outside, right? All good. I'm knitting from right to left. Um, I know not everyone knits this way. I know you can knit from left to right, but my work is going like I'm making stitches from right to left. Does that make sense? Now let's talk about inside out. So watch this. I'm just gonna push this inside out like so. Oh, wait, hold on, before I show you that, one more thing. My working needle is in the front. Like if you're knitting, the working needle is in the front. It's closest to me. That's important. Okay, so now let me flip this inside out. So I'm just gonna flip it. Okay, now the pearl side is on the outside. So the side that is on the outside is actually the side that will be worn inside. My flat knit side is inside like a little pocket. And my working needle is the one furthest from me. I'm still working from right to left. Like I'm still working stitches like so. So I'm not knitting any differently. It's just positioning and my cord is closest to my chest. My needle is further away from me. This is fine. 
If this is how you feel comfortable knitting, that is a okay. You're going to make your entire project with the wrong side on the outside. So inside out technically, but your product at the end is not going to be inside out. All you have to do is just flip it. So if you do, if it would make you feel better to be right side out, um, what you might want to think of, I'm trying to think of how to explain this. So again, my needle is further away from me, right? Like my cord is towards my chest. I know this is not easy to see. Um, so if you, you know, pop everything back so that the knitting side is on the outside, you'll just always want to think about working needles are towards you, like towards your chest. That's my working needle. And just work like that. And if things go inside out, just pop them back in. Um, when I first learned to knit a small circumference in the round, I learned, actually, I was trying to do double pointed needles, but I didn't own any double pointed needles. I think I was maybe 13 or something like that, 13 or 14. And so I couldn't just, you know, I didn't have the agency to just drive myself to the store and buy whatever I wanted. So I found some skewers, some wooden skewers in my mom's kitchen, and I taught myself how to knit double pointed in the round by that. I must have used a book or something because I don't think YouTube was around. And everything I made was inside out. And I didn't understand, like I, not only was it inside out, which again, I'm saying is not a problem as long as you keep it consistent, but I would flip, like I would be working inside out and then I would be like, oh no. And so I would flip the whole thing, but like also turn around at the same time and start going in the wrong direction. And it was just a mess. Eventually it just worked itself out. Um, so <laughs> It just, I don't know. I don't know if this is just a thing for like learning to work small circumferences in the round. It just, it feels weird until it doesn't. And then it just, then you just can't understand why you were inside out in the first place. So keep practicing. I hope that helps a little bit. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter because you can just flip your whole thing inside out when you are finished. All right. Oh, you know what? One more thing. There is a time when you probably do want to work intentionally inside out. And that is with color work, because if you have your wrong side on the outside, you get just that much more stretch on your floats. All right. Next question is from Diane. Hi, I know you have a lot of experience knitting the Musselboro hat. My question is, can I combine another yarn with my two ply wool fingering weight 316 yarn? What would you suggest? The yarn is otherwise thin and I do not want to make it into socks knowing that it's only two ply. Sure, you can definitely combine something with your yarn. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest doubling it because like holding two strands of the same yarn together unless you have two skeins because you're not going to have enough yarn to make the muscle whirl hat unless you have, you know, most of a fingering weight skein of yarn. But what you could hold with it is either Surrey or mohair and that will thicken it up also making it fuzzy and warmer and really lovely to knit oh i see kent what is he doing oh i see toaster hold on hi guys hello hi toaster that was very sweet <laughs> actually and it also felt so good to have the breeze in here it's again it's not like super hot like it was two weeks ago when I filmed the podcast, but it's nicer outside for sure. All right, where were we? You can definitely hold two yarns together to make it thicker for the Musselboro hat, make it a little bit faster to knit, and then you just use that whole gauge thing to figure out, you know, how many stitches you need to increase to for the Musselboro hat, and I think that will work out really, really nicely. If you're not a fan of using Surrey or Mohair, you could throw in another fingering weight yarn. Um, just know that it's going to look marled like it's going to look like two strands of yarn together if they're two different colors but that could also be a really cool look look as well all right last question for the day and also last question for this question segment i thought this one was really interesting this is from jess hi natalie thanks so much for a great podcast and all the vlogmas videos i'm really enjoying them i'm thinking about things i'd like to do better for my knitting and crafting heading into the new year and getting better finished object photos and documenting my projects in Ravelry is one of them. What advice do you have about finished object photos 
and notes and Ravelry that make for great project pages. Are there things you do throughout your crafting process that help make for a good project page in Ravelry? Hope you have a wonderful holiday season and new year. Okay, I love this question because again, this is something that you can't just go and Google like how to. It's uh, also something that's very subjective. So there's not like a, an official good way to make a project page in Ravelry, but I'm happy to share what I do and some things I do to save time. And also I'm always thinking of ways to improve. Like I don't, I would, that's just who I am. I'm like, well, my Ravelry project pages aren't perfect. I wish they had this, this, and this. So I'll just share with you some things I like to do. So before I start a project, I like to take a photo of my yarn skeined. So let's just say when I'm going to start this, I will uh, go outside. Um, I try to either go outside in the, well, I want to say early morning or like evening, but let's be real, I'm not going out in the early morning. So I try to go out at a time of day where it's either cloudy or the sun is setting because it's called golden hour for a reason. That's when you get the most natural light. If it's super, super sunny, you're not going to get a good photo. It's going to be overlit. It's going to make the colors look weird. The other tip for this is just to find somewhere that's in the shade. So you could be in broad daylight, but in the shade, like let's say you have a back patio and you're going to get a really great photo from that. So I'll take a photo of the yarn before I wind it up and start the project. That's almost always my first project page on Ravelry. Whenever I do start the project, I go ahead and put in any info that I already have, like the needle sizes, the yarn, um, and the date that I start it. And then I obviously name the project, uh, something to do usually with the pattern or with who I'm making it for, or a combination of the two. So that's pretty routine for me to just throw all that in there. Now for the Ravelry notes, I have, I feel like I'm starting to get a lot better at making Ravelry note pages, especially this year. Um, one of the things that has me doing that is that I'm sharing my projects here and online. And so giving more details is I think very helpful for everybody watching because then I don't have to remember everything that I did. I also have a place to send people when they're asking me a question about something that I worked on a while ago and I don't remember. And then they can go look at it there. And it's like more accurate than me trying to retell what I did because I don't remember. But I do like making Ravelry notes for myself because if I repeat a project, I mean, Case in point, my crochet blanket that I am going to be working on, I was able to go and copy all of the notes, I actually did that this morning, copy all the notes from my previous project, throw them into this project page, make changes to like what was different, like I used a different advent, um, I'm using a different this. I was also able to look back and see, oh, I used this hook size and I started with this hook size and I reduced my stitch count by this much and I didn't have to think about that again. I did the thinking only once. And that is why I like to take great notes on Ravelry. Now I like to do, let me see if I can pull it up here. Um, I like to do sec like sections in my uh, notes. How do I show those? Uh, I need to refresh this, hang on. Yes, so I like to do little sections in my notes. So like I have yarn, I have modifications, and I do little bullet points. I have the size, I have other notes, all kinds of things. So this is not gonna be, you know, everyone might not need to do this, but you can kind of like think about what are things that you are, anything that you're changing to the project, make sure that goes into your notes. Any tutorials that you're using for the project, you can link them in your notes in Ravelry. I love that so much because then I can go back and go, oh my gosh, I wanna do that same, um, you know, bind off that I did in X project. What tutorial did I use? And like, it's there in my notes. Um, I also, if I'm doing a gauge swatch here, that's a good tip. Let me find a sweater or something that I last did a gauge swatch with. I like to write in Ravelry, my needle size or hook size that I've used, my pre-blocking gauge and my post-blocking gauge. That way I have it somewhere that I can't lose it because if I write it down on the powder, if I write it down on a piece of paper, it's just going to be gone. Oops, I guess I didn't do that for this project. Come on, Natalie. Did I do it for this one? Yeah, so I'll just have a thing that says swatch. I may even say how I did the swatch. And then I'll have, uh, I guess I didn't do it that great for this one. I, I try, I'm, I'm improving every single time, but I might write like pre-blocking gauge, write it out, go wash my swatch, come back and fill in the post-blocking gauge. And then, oh, here's one last thing, and I'm, or I'll get too into this. My other thing that I like to do 
is after I've worked a project or while I'm working it, I put in like, you know, things I've learned or what I would do next time so that I can continuously learn from my project. So this was my, uh, let's see, what is this called? Citrine Light sweater, very wrinkly there. And I said, uh, things I learned. Um, actually that's very specific to the pattern, but, oh, they're both very specific to the pattern. But anyway, I'll just put things in there or like I might put next time I would make this an inch longer or I would do this or X or whatever. And I love that because I will also go and look through other people's project pages and see any of the notes that they have taken or suggestions that they've made. And I think it's just helpful for everybody. Um, so I hope that that helps. Oh wait, I had one more thing. Sorry, I had one more thing I wanted to share. Okay, this is the last thing. As far as photos go, I'm somebody who feels like it has to be a really great photo in order to post or whatever. And I'm like, well, then I'm just not gonna take the photo then, right? Because it's taking too long. And I don't have a lot of finished object photos on my Ravelry project page. But something that I've been getting better at is taking progress photos. So something that's very easy and natural for me is to post on my Instagram stories. I'll, you know, I'll get something out and I'll like snap a picture of it and post it to Instagram, easy peasy. So what I've started doing is instead of taking the photo on in Instagram, I take the photo on my phone first, then I'll post it to Instagram and upload the same photo to my Ravelry project page. So that way it's getting, um, that one photo is getting double use with almost no extra effort and I'm able to post or add things to my uh, Ravelry project page throughout and there's a feature where you can caption your Ravelry photos so I might put something on there and that's more for sharing with everybody else like I might put you know the date and like just finish the heel or like ready for the second sleeve or things like that so I, I really enjoy doing that it helps me out a lot and I hope it helps everyone else out too. So that's it for our question segment. Thanks for putting in so many amazing questions this year. Again, you can continue to ask your questions and I will do my best to answer them in the comments. Vlogmas is ongoing through December 26. I think December 26 will be our last day of Vlogmas. Just as a reminder, we are filming ahead of time. So we don't actually film on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, which kind of works out nicely because that way I can really just be in the moment and enjoy family time. But I'll probably be sharing some, you know, easy stories and stuff on Instagram for those days. But the last day that will be posted will be I think December 23rd, and that will be posted on the 26th. And in my last day of Vlogmas, I am planning on setting all my advents out and showing you like the full range of what each advent looks like. So hopefully that will be helpful for everyone who's already thinking about, you know, maybe which dyers you want to follow to see what advents you may want to purchase for next year. Just as a reminder, they start early in the year, spring, and summer. So get ready, follow those uh, dyers and be ready to go ahead and do that early on in the year. Um, I do have some other videos that are going to be coming up. In January, we'll be back to normal where we have a Tuesday video at 10 a.m. and then the Thursday podcast at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And I have some fun videos that'll be coming for that. Um, one of the ones that I'm planning to do is what to do with your Advent leftovers. You may have been working on an Advent project all throughout December. And now you have like tiny bits of each one left over. What do you do with two grams of 24 colors? So I have some project and pattern ideas for you for those that will be coming up in a video. And then I also have my year in review, which will be posting the first week of January. It's where I go and take a look through all of the projects that I've made for the year. I look at how many projects I've done in total, how many crochet, how many knit, how many socks, how many sweaters, how many blankets, <laughs> and just kind of analyze that and like go, you know, wow, this is what I did this year. What does that mean? What story does it tell about the year that I had? This is maybe my fifth year doing it. And it's always so interesting and so much fun. And I'll have the little template that everyone can do their own and share on Instagram as well. Um, last thing here is that it's the last chance to order the Greatest Yarny Adventure Box. This is from Wool and Women Fibers and it includes a sock skein with two 10 gram minis. You can also get it as a sock blank. Um, the extras that you can add on 
are these cute stitch markers. This one's our Van Lydia and it has a glow in the dark headlight and toaster. They come together. I don't know if there are any more bags, but this was kind of the basis for the greatest Yarny adventure. And if you're wondering what is the greatest Yarny adventure, it is the trip that we are on to visit all 50 states and tour 50 yarn stores. So it's been a fun collaboration um, with Andrea and Sam. And as I mentioned earlier in the question segment, we might be doing just a simple um, make along uh, early in the new year. I think that's it as far as um, news goes. I guess one last thing, I didn't put this on here yet, but I will be at Yarny Gras in New Orleans. I think it's at the end of January. So I'll share more about that when we start podcasting again in the new year. We had another fun and busy week. When I was looking back through everything we did, I was like, wow, no wonder I'm exhausted. And I spent all day yesterday thinking that it was Sunday and that today is Monday because that's my normal routine as I record the podcast on Mondays. But today's actually Tuesday and I missed some stuff that, or I missed one thing. I need to send my membership newsletter still. It normally goes out on Monday and I totally missed sending it. And now it's Tuesday and I'm just completely thrown off. Um, but we've had such a full and amazing week and gotten to see so many people, meet so many people. I've had family in town. We did Disney and it's been incredible. So last Sunday, um, we were driving back from the Florida Keys and I recorded part of the podcast where I talked about life before we actually went and did this. And then I recorded the project segment on a Monday. So it was kind of flipped around, but I didn't get to include this last week. So we went to Sheep Thrills, which is in Lauder Hill, Florida. And we got to meet up with a bunch of my Love and Stitches members, some that I've met before and some new ones. We all took a picture together um, that you can see here. But Sheep Thrills was a great shop, huge shop. <laughs> I did a little mini tour in one episode of Vlogmas. So just look for that picture um, with the same picture that I'm sharing here. And uh, you'll be able to see a mini store tour of Sheep Thrills. But it was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of them gave me like the sweetest gifts. I don't think I brought any of them down to the van with me today. Some of them I'm already using, um, but they gave me like a cute little Christmas tree ornament, um, some stitch markers, uh, some little in stoppers, a, um, what is it called? Like a yarn pocket, so many fun things. <laughs> so thank you and it was lovely to meet everyone and to get to spend some time. We extended our drive back to Orlando so that we could stop and it was so, so worth it. Um, then on Tuesday night, we did another knit night, this time closer to Orlando. It was about 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes, just depending on traffic uh, south of where we are in Winter Haven, Florida at four pearls and four pearls is also the home of emma's yarn um so it was really cool to get to meet them and enjoy their knit night it was so much fun they uh laura and her husband jd they own uh like a tap room tavern that has beer taps and food so they brought over pizza and beer and everyone was just like hanging out having a great time and it was a lot of fun <laughs> to get to do that so we all took a picture together as well um, and then the next day on wednesday we went back to four pearls early and we went before the store opened and recorded a yarn store tour so there's a mini yarn store tour in vlogmas but there will be a full yarn store tour for four pearls in January that you will get to see. And it's, it's really cool. <laughs> if you like Emma's yarn, you're going to really love this one. Um, but it's just also an incredible, um, story, I think of the, of the yarn store and how it's grown. Uh, so it's, it was exciting. It was, it was very fun. Uh, then on Wednesday evening, we spent a lot of time in the car on Wednesday because we drove again, like 45 minutes out to four pearls took us about an hour to get back. And then we ran upstairs, changed, hopped right back in the car. This time though, we weren't driving. We, my mother-in-law was driving and we drove two hours to St. Augustine. Uh, St. Augustine is also in Florida, but north of Orlando. And they are kind of known for their Christmas lights. I don't have any pictures, but we did show them in Vlogmas, uh, some video in Vlogmas, but it was 
just beautiful the way the town was decorated. It was jam packed. There were like these trolleys everywhere, taking people around to see the Christmas lights, people walking, people eating in restaurants. We didn't do any of that. We stopped at Whataburger because that's the closest, one of the closest Whataburgers. I think there's a closer one either like in Jacksonville or Tampa, or maybe it's about the same difference. I don't know my Florida geography very well, but um, we stopped at Whataburger because everyone, uh, my mother-in-law and my husband are from Texas. I am not from Texas, but I lived there for seven years, so I love Whataburger. And then the other girl, my mother-in-law's coworker that went with us is also from Texas. So we were like, Whataburger, Whataburger, Whataburger. We want that. And so we had Whataburger, looked at the Christmas lights and then drove back, drove the two hours back. So it was a very long day. Wednesday was exhausting, but so much fun. On Thursday, my family started arriving from all the different places that they live. I have three younger brothers. Um, one lives with his wife in Nashville and kind of close to my parents. Um, one lives in Austin, Texas, and the last one lives in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. So they all flew into Orlando and we got ready for a Disney weekend. This is something we wanted to do last year. We just didn't make it happen. And we almost didn't make it happen this year. At Thanksgiving, we were like, are we still going to do Christmas at Disney? Because we really want to. And we made it happen. We got a really cheap Airbnb <laughs> and, you know, put all of our money into the Disney experience because, you know, those tickets and the food are expensive. But it was really, really fun. Kent planned an amazing trip for us. Um, Kent is really, really good at, you know, being on that you to in order to get the most out of your day at Disney, this is this is totally personal opinion, but you kind of have to get there when the park opens because it's the least crowded when the park opens and you can ride so much more in that first hour than you can sometimes in like several hours the rest of the day. Also, if you are able to um pay a little bit of extra. There is something called like Lightning Lane and Genie Plus. I don't know exactly how it all works, but we did that because we wanted to make the most of our three-day trip. We had a lot of people who had never been to Disney before and we wanted to get them to experience everything in those three days. And then the other element of that is that you have to have all this knowledge about Disney and be on your app and be planning and be booking fast passes. And it's, it's a lot. And Kent did all of that for us. And he did such a good job. We probably had one of the best Disney trips that I've ever had because we got to experience so much and then I got to be with my family. So on Thursday, we didn't actually go to Disney. We just went to Disney Springs. Everyone was flying in at different times. And then we went to dinner, got into our Airbnb and had like an early night. I woke up super early. I think we left at 7 a.m. On, on Friday and we went to Magic Kingdom. And we had a great time at Magic Kingdom. There was a Christmas party that night. And I think that helped it not be super crowded because there was like nobody there that morning. It was very unusual. We got to ride so many things. We have so many ride photos. They are hysterical, some of them. And we just had an absolute blast. We went to lunch at the Animal Kingdom Lodge. And then we went over to Animal Kingdom Um I think, yeah, to end our day. And then we kind of had an early night and got back to the Airbnb around eight o'clock, got some pizza, and then tried to get to bed early again because we had another super long day on Saturday. We got to the park around eight and we didn't leave until mm, almost like 1130, I think. So it was a really long day. And also Saturday, it rained the entire day. I've never been to Disney where it rained the whole day time. Like I've been where it downpours and you're soaked and then it stops raining, but this was the whole time. Um, we honestly kind of just made the most of it. We were at Hollywood Studios that morning and then Magic Kingdom at night. Uh, my brother that really loves Tron wanted to go on Tron at night. He had so much fun. <laughs> um, but we we just had a great time um, doing all of the rides. Uh, in Hollywood Studios, we got stuck on the Tower of Terror um, at the bottom, like once we were done with the ride. So we were probably on there for like 10 minutes. Um, pr pretty quickly, somebody came and was like, hey, we're going to have to like manually like pull you back. You're going to get like a backstage tour. And so they literally pulled us back I, I didn't even realize that that's how the ride worked, but like the whole thing is like this thing that they can pull back and then we just 
walked off of it. It was very interesting and it wasn't really scary or anything, but they, Disney, you know, they handle it so well. They're like, is everyone okay? Does anyone need medical attention? And they're like, here's an experience, multi, you know, ride experience pass. You can use it as fast pass on anything. So we got to ride um, like rock and roller coaster again because we all really liked that one. And then in Magic Kingdom that night, it, I mean, it just poured rain. We were absolutely drenched um and we decided to go on uh, there was like no waits for any of the rides because it was raining so hard for hours and oh they still did fireworks though i was impressed that they were still able to do fireworks but then um what i was trying to get to is the last ride we went on snow white um what is it called seven dwarfs uh oh my gosh what the heck is it called Anyway, Mine Train, that's what it's called. We went on Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. And usually it's a ride that I don't really care that much about because it's a, it's an okay roller coaster. Like it's kind of a good medium roller coaster for people who are warming up to them. But I've never been on it in the rain before. And it was pouring rain and the whole ride is outside. We had our ponchos on and I have never laughed harder on a ride. I was laughing the entire time because we were just getting pelted with rain. My poncho was like over my face. It was hilarious. We had such a good time. We went right back around and did it again. And then we stood for like 30 minutes in the rain, getting our, <laughs> everyone getting their like purchases and treats and stuff. And then we were pretty miserable and so ready to go home, but it was still such a fun way to end the night. And then Sunday was our last day. We had a much more chill day. We went to Epcot. We tried a lot of the food. Um, we went on a bunch of the rides and uh, it was just a really, really good time. Such, such a memorable and amazing Disney trip. On Monday, um, everyone left uh, for the airport, probably like by about 11 o'clock when we had to check out of our Airbnb as well. So Kent and I loaded all of our stuff up. Uh, Kent, his mom picked us up. And we came back here and we just vegged. I did a ton. Honestly, almost all of the knitting and crochet that you see I did yesterday. I watched a bunch of movies and I just vegged and I knitted and I crocheted. Um, yesterday, I watched Toy Story 2. Kent and I both watched Toy Story 2 because we're really struggling with the Toy Story guessing game right now. So we watched Toy Story 2. I also watched Tick, Tick, Boom for the first time on Netflix. I had never seen that and it was fantastic. And then um, once his mom got home after work, we watched The Family Switch on Netflix, which is a Christmas movie. It was not very good <laughs> at all, but it did make me laugh a lot. And then I'm still reading my same book, The Unmaking of June Farrow. I am almost done. I just need like one good night of reading and it will be done. And I'm really happy. I think I'm going to be happy to finish reading it so I can read something else because I want to read this, The Kingdom of Sweets. And this book has just been dragging for me. So I'll be happy to finish it. We're going to close out this episode with tip of the week. And I am going to be sending you to one of my tutorials that I recorded last year for Advent. It is how to wind a mini skein by hand. I do think I shared this a couple of weeks ago, but I couldn't find evidence of it. And I've gotten at least two questions through Instagram and YouTube on how to wind mini skeins or comments on saying like, oh, you can just, you know, wind them by hand. I didn't realize it was that easy. So last year I recorded a full tutorial on how to hand wind mini skeins, like really in depth, probably more in depth than it needs to be, but I wanted to cover every single thing in case there was any questions or any like fears or apprehensions you had about winding mini skeins. I will take a mini skein and I know that is not a skein, I do have one, these things. I will take a mini skein anywhere with me. And as long as I can sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, I will hand wind it there. Rarely does it take longer than that. If there's a really big tangle or something that will happen, but most of the time I can get it wound up into a nice ball like this in about 15 minutes or probably less than that. So I will leave that tutorial down below in case that's something that you have been curious about or wanting to learn more about um, so that you can be winding your mini skeins during Advent and any other time of the year. Thank you so much for watching all throughout 2023. Um, it's been an incredible, incredible year and 2024 has even more in store.
Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in 2024. Bye!